Hi everyone, David Jackson here with Sling and Stone Marketing, where I share with you the tools and strategies to help you market your business online. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any new videos I upload. You can also find notes and links to resources in the video description below. And if there are any topics that you want me to cover in future videos, let me know in the comments. In this video, I'm going to cover some e-commerce marketing strategies that will get you more sales. And the best thing is they are free and you can implement them in your online store right now. First thing we're going to talk about is search engine optimization, also known as SEO. And this is probably the most important part because you are starting your marketing funnel at this point before the customer even gets to your website. So when they put in a keyword, something that they're searching for, and your website shows up in the search results page, you are also showing up with nine other websites along with maybe three or four different ads. So you need to make sure that your page title and meta description are optimized in order to entice the person to click on your listing rather than all of the others. And you do this by trying to get inside of the mind of your customer. Uh, the intent behind the keywords that they were using so that you want to make sure that they are also in the page title, which is the blue link that they will click on on the results page. You can also use this to separate yourself from your competitors uh, by letting the customer know about your unique selling proposition or USP. And if you don't know what that is, I have a video all about that right here. But it's not just the page title. You also want to make sure that your meta description is optimized for search because again you have to think about the intent of the person searching they already have a conversation going on in their head uh, whether it's a problem that they have or a solution that they're looking for so you want to use the meta description using the keywords that they're using so that it will resonate with them you'll stick out more and they will click on your listing which will boost your click-through rate and actually help you rank better for that particular keyword. Then when they get to your product page, you wanna make sure that that is optimized to get the person to buy. So things like your product headline, you want to make sure that it's clear, concise, and that the person knows what product they are looking at. Uh, the product description, you don't want to use the one that you get from the manufacturer because there are hundreds of other websites that are selling that product and they're using that same product description. Instead, you want to make sure that you stand out and separate yourself from all those other websites. You want to talk about the benefits of the product instead of the features, things like how high it is, the width, uh, all of the things that it comes with. That's all features. You want to talk about benefits, which is why those features are important. Do they solve a problem? What solution do they offer? This will continue the conversation that you started off with on the search engine results page because the person's looking for either a solution or they have a problem. And when they see in your product description that you are also talking about this product being a solution to the problem that they're having, they're more likely to buy. And you also want to make sure that you have high quality images uh, at different angles so that the person can see, possibly even zoom in on the product to get the detail of it and see it from all different angles. And as a bonus, you can even add video uh, showing you either kind of reviewing it, showing some of the things that the product does, giving a demonstration so that the customer can see themselves using that product and see that, hey, this isn't so hard. And oh, it really does do the things that they say it does. You can also use trust and shipping badges. These are things like the security badges that you see, whether it's Norton or McAfee, or if you have uh, secure socket layers, SSL. Shipping badges would be things like UPS, FedEx, uh, second day shipping, even payment badges like Visa, MasterCard, American Express, PayPal. These let the person know that you are trustworthy, that you accept different forms of payment, that when they order is going to be secure, and that you take security very seriously. And if you really want to produce some urgency for the customer to buy, you can use things like countdowns. Uh, there are coupon countdowns where the person's on your site and a little thing pops up 
counting down, like giving them 30 minutes or something, whereas uh, they can save an extra 10% on their purchase if they buy before the countdown expires. And there's also shipping countdowns, where if the person makes a purchase before a certain time, that'll guarantee that their order will be shipped out that day and they can get it as early as two days or maybe even the next day. Amazon even uses this. You see on some of their product pages, they say that if you order within the next you know, hour and a half or something like that, it'll be shipped out and you can get it the next day. And that's not the only thing that Amazon uses. They also have product reviews, which are powerful. Sometimes when I'm looking at a product, I'll go on Amazon to see if it's on there. And if it is, I'll read their customer reviews, see what they liked about it, see what they didn't like about it. And that influences my buying decision. And this is why you want to make sure that you have product reviews on your pages because this builds up social signals which can influence a person when they see what other people are saying about your product and it can get them to ultimately make a purchase. Next up is schema markup and search engines will use these to create these things called rich snippets which basically allows them to pull information from your page to display it on their search results page. And these could be extra things that are really important to the, uh, to the person that is searching. So it could be something like uh, the product reviews, the number of stars and how many reviewers there are. This extra information will separate you from all the other listings on the results page and will draw the attention of the searcher to your listing and get them to click on it. Now, most of the shopping carts out there like Shopify and Big Commerce, they already have the schema markup already implemented on your website. So you won't have to worry about going in and fooling around with any code and possibly messing something up. But you do want to make sure that your products are showing up with the correct information using the schema markup. So Google has a free schema markup tool which you can use to make sure that everything is showing up properly for your products. And it'll also point out any errors that you might encounter so that you can get them cleared up right away. And then there's probably everyone's favorite marketing channel, social media. And what I wanna talk about with this is what you should post on your business page and how you should engage with your audience. Now, most businesses will post things that are kind of self-centered for them. They'll post coupons, they'll post brand new products, they'll post things that are trying to get people to make a purchase. And that is not what social media is used for. They're completely missing out on the social aspect of social media. So instead you wanna post content that is relevant to the wants and needs of your audience. It's going to be more information based. It's going to be you helping them to get from point A to point B. A lot of the people that are on social media do not want to be sold to. They're either looking for information or they're just trying to engage with companies and other people. So even if they are aware of a problem that they're having, they're not actively seeking out a solution. But you could introduce them to a solution through an information article or something that they can use or try. Then in terms of engaging with your audience, you not only have the comments that people will leave on your posts, but you can also go into the different groups, like if you're on Facebook, you can go in the Facebook groups, or you can go off of the platform and just search out some discussion forums, or like maybe even Reddit threads where people are congregating and talking about topics that are related to your niche. Lastly, it's probably the most valuable platform for online businesses, and that is email marketing. If you do not already have an email marketing service provider, I highly recommend Drip for e-commerce stores. I put a link to them in the description below where you can get a free demo of the software and also a free 14-day trial. I even made a video which will walk you step-by-step -step through setting up your account and creating your first workflow. And I'll put a link to that video up here in the corner. So why is email marketing so powerful? Well, it's primarily because of the automated workflows. Basically, you just set them up once and you let them run. And you can have multiple workflows for different triggers. So let's say, for instance, uh, you have a new visitor coming to your website and they see that you're offering a free guide of your top 10 tips for them to catch their biggest fish ever. So they submit their email and that is a trigger. It triggers a workflow 
which will send them an email over the next 10 days or 20 days or even 30 days. And each email that you send them covers only one tip and it goes in depth helping them, giving them things that they can implement right now. And it also may, might have some links to some products that will help them. Now you're not really selling them hard to just buy your products. You're actually giving them something of value. And by you giving them value, that builds trust with your brand. And that makes it more likely that they will make a purchase from you. And that's really one example. I mean, you can use automated workflows for things like sending coupons if, if someone abandons the cart. You can create workflows for uh, people's birthdays or for specific holidays, or even sending out an email for customers who might have purchased specific products that you want to build some product reviews on. Maybe even giving them an incentive if they leave a product review, such as 10% off their next order. So the possibilities are really endless when it comes to automating your email marketing. And one of the best things about Drip is that it has a built-in CRM, which stands for Customer Relationship Management. This allows you to get a 30,000 foot view of your customers. So you can see which ones aren't really spending a lot, uh, which ones are your most valuable customers. So you can put them in a separate group and target different types of emails to them. Uh, maybe giving them better coupons so that they can come back and make even more purchases, uh, sending them exclusive information, product information uh, that would be valuable to them, and allows you to add data attributes that you normally wouldn't be able to get through just normal email marketing. So let's say if one of your salespeople is on the phone with them or having some form of an interaction, they can put tags and notes on that customer profile within your drip marketing tool that will allow you to either trigger other workflows, like if you add a new attribute, that can trigger a workflow to send out some specific information to that one customer. Because once you have a customer, it is a lot easier to bring them back to make another purchase since they've already trusted you enough to give you their credit card and make their first purchase. I mean, it costs 80% less to market to a previous customer than it is to acquire a new customer. So you don't wanna leave that money on the table. So if you implemented any of these tips in your online business, let me know in the comments below and use the hashtag GiantSlayer. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It will help me get the word out and help others who are struggling with marketing their online business. And make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss out on any new videos that I upload. I thank you all so much for taking your time to watch this. And until next time, go out and slay some giants.